866-594-4150. That's the number to reach us here at the Under the Hood Show. Don't forget, if you join the Hoodie Fan Club at underthehoodshow.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel, you could win a hoodie. Stop. Hoodie time. Uh, no, now we're going to get copyrighted. Ho- I said hoodie time. <laughs> he was a little out of rhythm. <laughs> Xander Monson, congratulations from all of us here under the hood. Xander, you have won a hoodie. I think the name Xander's cool. It is. Xander's cool. Xander's cool is a cool way to say it, too. Xander Cage, was that a, who was the, what was the, was that a Xander? Was he uh triple X? Was that, is that, was that his name in that movie? Oof. One of the movies, one of the movies with, uh, you with, think, what's don't his, look, don't look on, at hold me. Hold on a second. Don't look Russ, at me. Hold on. We have to stop for a second. Shannon, I want to talk to just you for a second. Has he not learned that we can't do that with him? <laughs> no, he has not learned. And he won't, and, he, and you know what I don't know? So he won't learn. Uh-uh. I feel like Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He doesn't learn. I'm surrounded by idiots. Now we can come back. Uh, okay. Hi. The so, hoodie comes from UTI. Universal Technical Institute. Find them at uti.edu, where they will train you how to be a mechanic. And one day you can be smart as us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait exactly. a second. Hopefully smarter. <laughs> maybe combined. <laughs> because, well, yeah. we're just, yeah, all the, may, maybe the three of us uh, combined, smarter than the three of us combined. That uh-huh. would be, that would be good because there's <laughs> issues listening going, going yeah, on. Yeah, we right can now. definitely do that. Yeah, we can, That's we can no hook problem. them up <laughs> in a warmer climate too. <laughs> yeah. First week we'll have them up above that standard. <laughs> right. Universal <laughs> Technical in. Institute, <laughs> uti.edu. <laughs> 866-594-4150. Let's go to Nebraska and talk to John. You're on the Under the Hood Show. John, what can we do for you? Yeah, gentlemen, I have got an 87 F-150. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we won't, just got it. We won't call it a, any, any certain ton. We'll just call it an F-150. No, it, no, it's, no, it's not a half ton. No, no, I wouldn't ever call it that. That's, that's my 60. In 87, it might ton. be. It could still be, maybe. Oh, yeah. I, we're not sure. <laughs> Okay, here's the deal. It's been sent since 2000. What do I do? Do I put oil in the cylinders, pull the plugs, prime it like a new motor? You know what I'm saying? Been sitting for 24 up, years. Well, yeah. Russ, Russ, what did you witness at the Lambrecht auction? I wasn't there, but what, what did you witness at the Lambrecht auction? I saw people go, huh, it turns over with a breaker bar. Let's, oh, it's got oil in it. Let's. Put a boat gas tank on it and prime the carburetor and fire it up and, and drive cars, it on the trailer. And these vehicles had sat there since 1960s. 60s, 50s and 60s, some of them had yeah, sat. They, they those had, were like 64 or 5s, I think, if I remember yeah, right. Yeah, I watched them with a couple, like 61, 62, 3, 4, 5 Chevy trucks and some old, you know, 59, 60, 61 Chevys. And they did just that. They took a boat gas tank, connected it right to the fuel at the carburetor, Pumped up the primer ball until it was full and cranked it and drove it. They We're not no condoning brakes. this activity, but we witnessed uh, it. Right. They had no brakes, so they moved. Oh, but they but, they tried but, moving them first. They just <laughs> gently, you know, does the crank move or is it stuck? Uh, if it's stuck, you're going to have to lube up the cylinders, you know, take the spark plugs out, put some PB blaster in there and let, let it soak and then just gently try to move it and see if it will. But John, what have you done already? Uh, unloaded it off the trailer. There you go. <laughs> and looked at it. And is it a straight yeah, sticker or automatic? Brakes. You have it's brakes? Auto. It's an automatic, okay. Yes, it has brakes. Okay, that's that's a that's a plus there because you're gonna want to go through the whole brake system and look for anything that's cracked and dried out and replace it that's that's rubber parts because that's super important on that. And you might find that after you drive it for a while you get a wheel cylinder or a caliper that starts to leak because it's cracked inside where you can't see it. But usually with the fluid covering the inside, that's fine. It's usually hoses that crack and break. But Turn the engine. If you can turn the engine by hand a little bit, you might even just grab that balancer with some gloves on so you can get a good grip and just try to turn it by hand. And if you can move it, I think you're fine. If it moves, then make sure you got good gas in it and oil and fire it up. See what happens. I don't think it's going to be. I, I, sni- I, I snorted the tank. So I, I can't smell nothing. I suppose it's all evaporated out. I don't. Know. We thought you were talking a little funny this morning. So <laughs> uh, the, the tank is probably, it. if it was low, it could be completely dry, but we saw cars at that Lambert auction that still had fuel in them after 50 years because oh. they must have been full and they were closed and they just had fuel. It wasn't very good fuel. I don't know if you could call it fuel anymore, but they had stuff in them. 
um, but that fuel is no good to run an engine, even if your car will fire on fuel that is very old it it's going to cause such a detonation problem and a lack of power problem you would never want to run it through that engine so you want you want good clean fuel now you can buy fuel tanks there are so many companies that sell a fuel tank for this truck online i bet you buy a new fuel yeah, tank I, I look it's cheap yeah uh, probably 100 to 200 tank, bucks yeah. but buy a tank put it in uh i'd buy the tank buy the sending unit and the straps you know everything together so you just got a one clean thing throw it in hook the fuel line up, you know, get your air gun, blow fuel or air through that fuel line to the front, maybe even spray some carburetor cleaner in it first, like a whole can and then blow it out. And so it's clean and hook it to the carburetor. Or this is, this is fuel injected. Ooh, it's an 87. Yeah. So yeah, just blow that line out. Good. Hook it up, start it. And I'm definitely going to want to put a can of Berman B12 fuel injector cleaner in the tank because the, if it runs, and you can get all the injectors open. You might have to tap on the side of them to get them freed up if any of them are stuck. That's probably going to be your first snag, I bet. Yeah, and once you get them open, then you can run it, and that barium will clean out those injectors and keep them going. Then you shouldn't have to pull them. But that that Ford engine is, you got a much better chance of the injectors not being stuck completely shut than you do on a Chevy engine. The Chevys. If that was getting, an LS, we had a ton of them the stick. The LS stick like glue and you cannot get them open. You just throw them away and get a new one. But the older Chevys were fine from the 80s. John, thanks very much for the call. Good luck. That's uh, kind of fun to see what will happen there. He's going to, I think, have success. I mean, mm-hmm. we back in the day when we were starting our business, we had cars that my dad would bring in that were that had been sitting for a long time and we were constantly bringing things back to life. And, and I watched my, my sister and now this is way different, but my sister and her husband, a lot of the stuff they do with old tractors that have been sitting around for a long time. It's quite amazing what will still run. Yeah. And it, that Lambert auction around for a long time. The perfect example of that. That was kind of crazy when they, when people would do that. It was, it, I started so many cars when I was very young, starting off that, that had been sitting for, you know, Back then, 10, 20 years. and 10 years, you, that was forever on a right. on a car. But now we have people that let cars sit 10 years, and they bring them to us for an engine. And we put an engine in it. It's really not that big a deal. And the difference probably then was then your carburetor either worked or didn't. Because, you know, and now it's yeah. kind of the same thing with mm-hmm. multiple fuel injectors. Well, we would, we would dig something out. Like, I can remember we pulled a 71 Grand Prix out of the backyard at a, at a house. And this was like 1985. And it had been sitting since probably... 1980, 79, 80. So the car really wasn't that old, even the whole time. But now today's standards, uh, that's not old at all. Right. But back then a car sits five years, it's forever. Well, we dump gas down it. We get it to run. It was horrible. Then we looked around until we found like five or six other carburetors off of old junk laying around. And one of them actually worked and we're like, yay. That we is so, it. I, I, I say this stuff all the time, but it is funny to think you would never think that of a 2010 right now. Never in the world would you think, oh, it's been sitting in their backyard for five years. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's it's just, I mean, I miss I miss those days because there was so much around. There was no internet, so people knew where it was. It was just happened to be if you caught a glimpse of something as you drove <laughs> right. by, you went, oh, what is that? <laughs> and everything was wooded, so it could be well hidden. And one day the sun's shining just right, a tree branch fell down, and you go, there's a 67 Camaro in the <laughs> yeah. trees. Or you drove by and, and you see the edge of a tarp off because the wind was blowing super strong one day in a rainstorm and there sits a 68 GT KR 500, you know, in the, in the side of the alley. And you're like, hmm, you don't see that stuff anymore. It's all gone. 866-594-4150. Let's talk to Scott. You're on the end of the hood show. Scott, what can we do for you? Hey, good morning, guys. First time caller, long time listener. Thank you. Um, uh, I have a 2010 Honda Civic LX with about 112,000 miles on it, and the car runs like a Swiss watch until it reaches operating temperature, and I'm at a stoplight, and the idle starts to get really rough, and it drops down to about five or 600 RPM. What could be causing that? Well, first of all, it's the opposite of running like a Swiss watch. As soon as it gets up to operating temperature, <laughs> I mean... When it- and it's not at the stop. <laughs> okay. And it's not warmed up. <laughs> right. <laughs> My sister had one of those Swiss watches, the Swatch, you know, and it ran, oh, yeah. ran perfect until I ran it over with the bike. See? It was great. Yeah. 
You know, I, so same thing here. I think I the time my, slowed down a bit. I told my son recently <laughs> that we'd have to dig, but I I had at one time a big collection of Swatch. Watches. I bet you did. I and, can and imagine. I, I never I, owned one. I have them somewhere yet. I never owned parachute pants or a Swatch watch. Swatch mm-hmm. watch, I did. No parachute pants. <laughs> None of that. No Zumbas. I was too skinny. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I barely had enough holes in the watch band. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> there you go. For the you and I have this, we wore the similar things for different reasons. <laughs> oh my! All right, so you know Civic. that. So these these engines have a like a a thermal electric idle air control system on it, which is meant to lower the idle. When it's warm, raise the idle when it's cold, and do it both thermally and electrically because it's kind of like a two-stage thing. The way it operates electrically, it it operates the airflow, but it it needs to know is it we have this much range. We only have a certain amount of range to move. So by being cold and when it changes inside, do the wax inside of it, it allows it to have a have a bigger air hole in there and allow more air into it and brings the idle up. When it's warm, it closes off and it's it's lower, but it still has to move. So if you've got one that's dead and no longer working, it may only be controlling it thermally and not electrically. So it raises okay. up and it goes down, but it can't fine-tune it where it needs to go. So most people just find a whole throttle body and throw on there. You could still find probably a good one in a U-pullet yard if you look around. Not everyone is bad, but... A number of them are. You might have to, you know, go searching a couple times in a self-service yard to to find one. It is getting older. I believe they still sell this as a brand new part, but brand new part. Yeah. I did look one up. Oh, it's been four or five years ago, and it was, we bought one. I think it was 350 pretty close, but we had to because it was like okay. we could not get a a good used one for this vehicle. We had to get it going right. And we, but but we first, did. before you go buy anything, you'd hook your scanner to it and well, see what's happening at idle. If, if you, yeah, look at your scanner data, and then we actually connect our probes from the scanner on our meter right to this valve, and then we look and see, is the as, as we rev it up and down with the throttle, is it trying to control that thing? And if there's nothing going to it, you know, we got a problem with the computer or wiring. But I've never seen a computer problem or wiring okay. to do that. So if we see a signal, but it's not doing anything, well, we know it's dead. Does that help you out there, Scott? Perfect. Yeah, that's that's perfect. I really appreciate the advice. And by the way, I was out to you pull it last weekend and got some rear headrests for the exact same car. No, oh, cool. Honda. So a uh, beautiful facility. I took my wife out there. She had never been out. Um, very impressed with the entire team behind the desk. Uh, the organization of the yard, just wonderful place. I enjoyed it. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for the call, Scott. That's I've, I almost went over there. The, I've never not been to the, you pull it lot. You really? Uh, yeah. Isn't that, that's if strange. you're going to start, I stopped you last time you were going to go. Uh-huh. If you're going you know to start why I did a trip, that? you should go there. Do you know why I did that? I was scared for you. What I would find yeah. at the model I was looking at just, and all that. Yeah. Just, or what he'd come out of there with. And the <laughs> number of texts that I would get. <laughs> Hey, can oh, I buy yeah. this and restore I didn't, that, it? That's no. probably the end of the day why yeah, I didn't want you there. You're right. My own sanity. That, that, thank you. You yeah. might have saved us both. Yeah. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we want to hear from you. 
Make a radio appointment each week to hear the Nordstrom's Under the Hood show. 866-594-4150. That's the number to reach us here at the Under the Hood show. Let's talk to Dirk. You're on the Under the Hood show. Dirk, what can we do for you? Hi, good morning. I uh, I have a 2016 Mazda CX-5, and I'm wondering, uh, it's got 120,000 miles on it, and I'm wondering if I should put a new timing belt or chain or whatever and a water pump and all that on there just to keep it running good. We haven't had a problem with the timing chains, like failing and destroying the engines on those cars, or a lot with the water pump issue on them as far as needing an engine because they've come in for that we've had some leaky pumps we've replaced but we have had tensioners go bad on the chains and camshafts phasers actuators go bad causing knocking noise and ticking noise in the top but they never they never got so bad that they jumped or anything no they just came in were noisy so hey we got to replace the chains and the actuators and you're fixed um that's the worst that we've had, but we've had some of these go bad because they burn so much oil that the motors are ruined and then they need an engine and catalytic converters when that happens, but not everyone does it. The Mazda engine's not nearly as bad as some of the stuff we've seen with Hyundai and Kia, and uh, we've even seen some Toyotas starting to do it now. Most chain systems, now we're, I think Russ and I are both on the right page that this is a car with a chain, but most chain systems are designed to be the life of the engine. They don't they don't put a maintenance level typically on a chain system. But I'm just going to repeat what Russ said. We see things break on chain systems, mm-hmm. but it's typically the result of maintenance problems, oil problems, and that sort of a thing. But there are times where they just have tensioners go bad. They don't keep the tension and it starts slapping or, you know, he says knocking. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the kind of stuff you'd listen for. If you start getting any noise from under the hood that's that's new and unusual that you haven't heard before, it's a good time to push pause and and uh, and go get it checked out because it could be something you spend a thousand dollars on to fix, or twelve hundred, or fourteen hundred, or seven hundred, whatever the situation might be. Versus you let it go too long and then all of a sudden it does jump time, throw the belt, breaks breaks something catastrophically in the in the uh, chain. I said belt in the chain system or jumps, gets the engine out of time and, you know, then it's catastrophic again. So I think you're, I think you're in good shape if it's running quiet and smooth and you're, you're taking care of it. Seems to run good. I give it an oil change every 5,000. So I guess I'll just let her run till, uh, I do hear something. You better back down on the oil change from what we've seen. So when we have, when we, we've put a number of engines in these, but not an inordinate number but of the ones we've had to replace everyone has had the same thing in common that they change the oil somewhere between 4,500 and 6,000 miles they just go by the dash so far not a single one of those that has come in for an engine has said they've been changing it three months 3,000 miles not a single one and that goes for most engines we see come into our shop for an oil system failure and 98% of every engine that comes into our shop for a replacement is an oil system failure type issue, timing chains, piston rings, things like that. And out of all those, it's it's almost non-existent that we have somebody come in with a three-month, 3,000-mile change. It's all heavier ones. So something to think about for sure. Going a little sooner. Yeah. How do you use the vehicle? What's its, what's its daily use? Yeah, there you go. Uh, daily use, I drive it. Seven miles to work and seven miles home. You and then need- in the winter, I go to Arizona for three months, and I drive it a lot more down there. So. It's fine in the winter. In the summertime, it's going to need more more. Change. You're saying his winter in Arizona. Yeah, because it's warmer. Yeah, Driving it seven and miles drier. to work and back every day is about worst case scenario, yeah, that's, right? that's killing it. Yeah. That's hard on an engine. Yeah, yeah, you need to change your oil more often because of your use. That would be yeah. considered heavy use. And our temperatures yep. here, you know, are, are the temperatures in a northern climate. Down in Arizona, though, no, it's dry. Uh, it the, the friends I have that live down in those areas, they're like, oil system, what? No, we yeah. don't have those problems. They're just wear out from Because we had so much problems with the condensation you know inside because mm-hmm. the temperature changes and your materials they get moisture inside of them 
And then the oils, they need that chemical package updated uh, more often because you're not getting the engine warm enough to run it through a good heat cycle uh, on a day, on a regular basis. Now, if you would have told us you run this thing 35 miles every day one way, mm-hmm. uh, I I could prescribe to stay in yeah, it's good where you're at, but not the way you're not the way you're driving it. Dirk, thanks very much for the call. Good luck. Eight six six five nine four four one five zero. The we don't hear much about Mazda engines either way. We is it just they're pretty we don't, good? Yeah. But I've got in my parking lot right now. I have two two Mazdas CX okay. cars with bad engines. And we just finished a warranty claim on a CX nine. I mean that they're they're regular. Russ hit it. Russ hit it on the head. It it can be any brand if they're not. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hitting the regular maintenance and matching the driving style. And we, so. Or driving um, cycles. Route, yeah. cycles yeah. Routes. We, we don't do, we don't do timing chains on Camaros and rear wheel drive cars with the three, six. They just don't fail. Why? We pull the valve covers. If we have to, for some reason, like a gasket that's bad, they're clean on both sides. They could probably go longer. An Acadia, a Traverse, anything with a transverse engine in it, that's front wheel drive. We pull the front cover, beautiful. Looks like the Camaro. Pull the back cover where the catalytic converter is bolted to the exhaust manifold and crammed up next to a firewall. It's always baked oil through the whole thing. And that back passage plugs up, doesn't oil the chain real well. And then the chain starts getting loose. The tensioner sticks and then it rattles and then they jump and then they kill the motor unless the oils change more frequently. So even with frequent changing, Unless you're running like a Justice Brothers oil system cleaner, every single oil change, you will continue to build up plaque in your engine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just put burnt it. oil. It will build up until finally it clogs its arteries and it just says, I'm done mm-hmm. overnight. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things where, and you need to have that relationship with your mechanic because a mechanic can tell you, Oh, no, I, I never see an oil problem with these. Right. Go ahead and do what you're doing. Or you can say, nope, this is a big problem. We put a lot of engines in these. Change your oil. That's why in this show we try to tell you certain engines we don't worry about because they just, we don't see them come in for problems. But other ones we do. You sent out a message last night to us about yeah. the Ford recalls. You were right back in this. This, uh, this Ford, uh, there's a lot of news coming out about some a major Ford recall. Well, they had a couple of them, and one yeah. of them was because of, Low power causing the cars to stall. Electrical failure, yeah. B- BCM and powertrain control yeah. module, body control module. And then the other one was dying. in regards to that was four hundred and fifty thousand cracks yeah. in fuel injectors, like forty four thousand causing fuel vapors that could potentially lead to a fire. Now there again, these things don't usually cause everybody to have these problems, right. but in certain instances, they got to get them fixed. And this this alert was coming from a an ex account that was, a, I think it was car dealership guy. And he was just talking about the amount of energy and dollars it costs the manufacturer when they have these sort of issues come up. You know, it becomes quite all consuming in the service departments and sure. the parts departments. And if all of a sudden they got to start procuring these certain widgets and have them there. And it's, it, it's, it's quite an endeavor when you just step back and look at what has right. to happen when there's a big recall like that. Well, and I thought too, what I, we saw the news about the injectors and the possible fire hazard. And then right on top of that was this major recall for the power loss. So it looks, it's bad, but it even looks worse. Because a million vehicles got, total with yeah, the two together. You got the fire. Well, and they, they just had a thing with the cyber truck a few days ago. And there were certain radio show hosts that made it like act like it was, oh, it's the sky is falling. And it's like, stop sales, stop you know, or stop delivery and stop driving immediately, or there could be a problem with the Tesla Cybertruck. Well, just go so get far <laughs> it was a, it was a, it's gone already because it was just a quick software update they did, and back they were. That'll do it for this hour of the Under the Hood Show. Hour two is coming up. The Under the Hood Show is brought to you by Sturdivants.
You're listening to the Nordstrom's Under the Hood Show with the Motor Medics, Shannon Nordstrom and Russ the Super Tech Evans. Shannon is an ASE engine and parts specialist, and Russ is an ASE master certified technician with extensive factory drivability training. Join the Motor Medics for fun and free automotive advice with real world solutions to everyday automotive problems. The Under the Hood Show is heard weekly on this and other great radio stations across the U.S. Find out how you can participate in the show by visiting underthehoodshow.com. With Russ Evans, this is Shannon Nordstrom thanking you for tuning in to the Nordstrom's Under the Hood Show. Have a great day and remember, PTLA. The opinions heard on this program, based on the many years of experience of Russ and Shannon, are offered for entertainment value only and as a guide to your repair needs. No claim to repair or cause is given or implied. Always consult with your own certified technician and follow all safety procedures before attempting any repair. To be a part of the show, call 866-594-4150. Under the Hood is produced by Prairie House Productions. All content is the property of Nordstrom's Automotive Incorporated and may not be used without our permission. Copyright Nordstrom's Automotive Inc. Now, let's go Under the Hood with the Nordstrom's Motor Medics. Welcome to the Under the Hood Show. We are glad to have you with us. Russ Evans is here to answer your automotive questions. Thanks for joining us under the hood. Shannon Nordstrom is here to do the same. Hey, welcome hoodies. Thanks for tuning in so we can help you tune up. I'm Chris Carter here to answer your calls at 866-594-4150. That's the number to reach us. We've got a call coming in from long distance, Louisiana. So let's get to John. You're on the end of the hood show. John, what can we do for you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Fantastic. I've got a 2003 Chevy Tahoe 5.3 liter. And uh, I'm having an issue with the uh, idle. So whenever I start it, it'll spit and sputter for about, oh, 20 seconds or so. And then it will slightly rev up a couple hundred RPMs and then smooth out and purr like a kid. And it'll do it every time. So I can drive it, turn it off, turn it right back on. It'll do the same thing. Oh, every and time. I, Every time. And the only code that it's throwing is a knock sensor, low voltage code. And I've changed those out and it's still doing the same thing. Hmm. That, that code, if you replace the sensors and the two pieces of the wiring harness that go up there, that should go away unless you've got a bad computer. And that's possible. Okay. We've we've put some computers, the PCMs, in those, and we've we've done uh-huh. we've done a ton of those those knock sensors, the one and two that are front, forward and rear of each other under the intake there, and that little wiring right. harness that goes on there. Dorman Products sells that harness that you can get for that, but that that right. fails a lot. They corrode inside, even if you can't see it on the ends. But as far as Nart's, okay. you know, no start. I'd, I'd put a fuel pressure gauge on no, it and see it, what it looks it, like, you know, it cause starts. that's that hard. Once it starts, you know, no clean start, it's starting up and sputtering. I would put a fuel pressure gauge on it and see what it looks like. Make sure that you've got the proper pressure right, right there. Because if it's, if it starts up and it won't run right away, uh, like it should, and you've only got five or six pounds of pressure. And then once the pressure comes up, it starts smoothing out and running good, then You've either got a fuel pump issue where the pump's bad or it's uh, bleeding down because you've got an injector. If you've got an injector that's stuck on that thing, it'll dump fuel into the engine when you shut it off. The pressure will drop, and then when you start it, it's going to spit and sputter until the engine clears out. And it'll happen immediately? Uh, every every okay. single time. All right. because, you know, and you might okay, even right. notice poor fuel mileage compared to what you had, at least a little bit different. That makes sense because, um, like I said, whenever I... Every time I start it, it'll do that for about 20 seconds and then bump itself back up and smooth out. But it's so rich smelling, like I can yeah. smell fuel. Yep, that would that would do it. And on the older ones, you're you're right there where it switches from, depending on whether it's flex fuel or not, switches from a fuel pressure regulator with a vacuum line on the driver's side of the fuel rail to a returnless system with just one line coming up um, to it. Because the ones, anything yeah, that's it, got a vacuum is those, those will leak and uh, draw the, fuel. The pressure in. regulator yeah. itself on the rail of, on that two line system. Yep. Yeah. It's uh it's the flex fuel and it does have a fuel pressure regulator, which is brand new. And I have tested the vacuum on that and it 
it does seem to have good vacuum. If that's all good, then <clears throat> I'm leaning towards an injector that's leaking. That was just one of the things that would happen on that style engine. John, thanks very much for the call. 866-594-4150. Shannon, what, uh, you've been gone for a while. What, uh, what have you been doing? What's, what do, what have you noticed? Just got sick of you guys. Is that it? You yeah. just needed a little needed break? A break. You Fair guys enough. told me, you guys told me to leave. I, mm-hmm. I, I can take a hint. Yeah. I appreciate it. Glad how, you're back, though. How'd the show go without me? I didn't listen or anything. Swimmingly. Uh, it I went don't know. fantastic. It was- 20 calls per show? It was shocking how well it went. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's it better than this one. I, I I would expect nothing less from you guys. No, I, I had uh, been gone for a couple weeks. I was in St. Louis for the United Recyclers Group and Team PRP Joint Conference, okay. and there was over a 1,000 Auto recyclers there. One of the biggest shows that and have been there for a long time. And you missed the eclipse, didn't you? Yeah. And yeah. you were in St. Louis. No, I was there. I was there after that. You couldn't have got there a day early nah. to watch it. Was Bunny, so much going was on. Bunny Comiskey there? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you with a look <laughs> on my face. Bunny Comiskey was a friend of my mom's when I was a little kid. <laughs> and he owned, I think it was Ace in St. Paul. Okay. And I just, when you I know, was. You know, I'm going to. After the show today, I'm leaving to go to Fridley. Okay, ask and 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 the guys from Ace I know are still around. Mm-hmm. And I think so that's where he was. There's been some. He was down there. Changes in ownership there too. Or down there on six generations more. at least. <laughs> so and maybe of, I could win that one. Of course, as a kid, I I keyed in on the name Bunny Comiskey. I don't remember. What I, is it that makes <laughs> every single Ace Hardware in the country that I've ever been to? They all smell like you know, like a Volkswagen. You go open the door of an old Beetle. You're like, I could close my eyes, and that's a beetle, right? You can close your eyes and say, I'm taking you into a hardware store. Which one is it? I said, this is Ace Hardware. <laughs> is it the fertilizer they keep by the front door? It's a good question. I'm serious. Every Have you noticed, Shannon? No. You go to an Ace Hardware, any Ace Hardware, and it's there's listeners But I will right never now. not notice now. now. Right. There are listeners right now going, I know what you're talking about. It's like when you walk into the, when you were a kid and you'd go into the bicycle store. Yeah, that, yeah. Or that about, one I get. Or the ATV store, you remember I, that? Oh, I'd get that one the too. The three-wheeler store, <laughs> yeah, you'd smell the smell of yeah. the new tires. Yeah, mixed with a little two-stroke smell. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. I could get, no, and he was talking about Ace Auto Parts <laughs> right. in the cities. Ah, I thought we were talking about Ace Hardware. Yeah, though, that's a good segue though. We, yeah, it was close. I mean, we're, no, I'll I'll maybe drop Bonnie, Bonnie Comiskey the next couple of yeah. days. But I'll no, we were down Bunny. there. Bunny. Bunny. I put Bunny. Bunny. He gave me 40 bucks for my uh, arrow. That my brother gave me for graduation that never ran. Bunny gave me 40 bucks. I felt pretty good about it. So, no, I was down there for a conference, and I had to present a couple times about some new standards we're building in the industry for parts preparation and shipping. Uh, what is the what is the proper way that a professional automotive recycler should prepare an engine for somebody to buy, as an example? Okay. As a shop, I can tell you how not to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, and, then, and then taking that next step, what is the proper way to ship that? For a successful shipment, and we're, I could also tell you how not to do it. <laughs> so we're setting our up engines sta- are fine. We're setting up standards, and this is a joint effort between the Automotive Recyclers Association, the United Recyclers Group, and the Team PRP Premium Recycled Parts Network. And so that was part of the thing. We're also working on a a enhanced industry certification that can be promoted by two industries. And I've been right in the middle of all this stuff. So we were down there for that. And huge conference, wore myself out getting there, being there. Uh, and then right after that, heels on that, we came back for my daughter's uh, grand march at prom, my, my our youngest, and then jumped right into going to Washington, D.C. the following week for our, what used to be an annual Hill Days event, but we haven't done since 2019 because of COVID. Sure. And just trying to get back on track in Washington, D.C. to go basically take a group of people. And, um, and, and lots of industries do this and they have their hill days and they go out and visit their individual representatives. So I took the time after training for a day with our, our governmental affair folks. And we went and visited, uh, Congressman Dusty Johnson's office, Senator John Thune's office, Senator Mike Round's office. For us, I've got a pretty small contingent to visit. Right. And I kind of have an opportunity to, in some shirt, shirt tail way, know all three of them mm-hmm. just through different events that we're involved with. But I got stood up by by Thune and Rounds. Oh, really? I did. Mm-hmm. It, it was over the. They chose the Japanese prime minister's visit over me. I can, yeah, I would too. 
Yeah. I mean, if he came in right now and they were like, we only have one chair, it's either going to be his or Shannon's, I'd probably take him. You'd talk to the Japanese prime minister? I think so, yeah. Yeah, he had a rousing speech at Congress, but we had, the day before we had been out touring with our group, we did a little touring, and um, there was a lot of journalists there and stuff because they were doing a state visit at the White House. And so it was kind of neat to see some of that stuff in the motorcades going around. But no, I was in D.C. for... For the remainder of that week, and had a successful visit there, and I had a great story to tell about losing my phone in a Lyft car, but okay. we'll get to that maybe if we have time. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to Canada on the Under the Hood Show. Thanks for listening. 866-594-4150. Car feeling ill? Don't want to spread it to your wallet? Call the Motor Medics now for free advice. 866-594-4150. That's the number to reach us here at the Under the Hood Show. Now let's go to Saskatchewan, Canada and talk to Glenn. You're on the Under the Hood Show. Glenn, what can we do for you? Hi, I have an 07 Buick Allure, uh 3.8 automatic uh, at 150,000 miles at Light to medium throttle, I have a surge in it. And once in a while at a stoplight, I'll step on it a little bit and it'll it it'll sit there, do nothing, and then it'll take off. What could be the issue? No one Well, he's got first of all we gotta call out the fact that he's got a Buick Allure. Mm-hmm. What would that be? That'd be like a lacrosse here in in the states, I think. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Same, same, basic. Yeah, because I mean, we yeah. see some of that stuff in our in our interchange and data systems. Yep. You look up a, it's the you lacrosse. look up a lacrosse, and you see a lure, and and like, where's the lure? Oh, that's a Canadian version of that. <laughs> so, the luster and the allure. The luster. R e l u s t r e. Well, I just put luster with it because it sounds okay. like luster should go with a lure. I don't. Oh. There is no such car as there a luster. Be. I don't think. 
All right. I think I want one. I think so too. You should lust for a luster. The sapphire. There's should, gotta be a car named they Luster make a somewhere in the luster. world. If there's not a luster Find it, Chris. There's oh, a car there's not. Luster. There's not. That's a car model, I guarantee. There, there's it. not somewhere. a luster. <laughs> no. That sounds like somebody that should be in jail. It's another million dollar idea. Glenn, there's no luster. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> when you <laughs> when you give it that gas, when you say it does nothing, what is nothing? Does it does the tack go up? Does it rev up and go nowhere? Yep. It does. The tack revs up, and then two seconds later, it'll take off. And it doesn't do it all the time. Okay. Yeah, it sounds sounds to me like you've got that. There's a problem some of those have in the transmission. With the valves, they stick, and then they just they won't go. They're they're basically just kind of bound up on themselves, and they just won't go anywhere. And then and sometimes they take off with a little bang, and they release and go. Other times they... Um, they just slip into gear and, and go, but sounds more like a transmission issue. If you didn't have the tack going up, I'd, I'd think you could have any number of things going on electronically, throttle body, um, anything going on, but it's, I've got new, it had a fair bit of work done, new coil, uh, plugs, wires. It's been, uh, PCV valve, that, that whole bit has been done. It's not the engine. It's in the transmission. Yeah. This uh, transmission, we replace a lot. I just got finished okay. putting one in, in a uh, 2008 Acadia, same style transmission, and they just, they they can be great, but they can also have this issue with them, and that they just fail. And there may be some codes in there, if they scan it, no. that are not showing no up code. on your dash. Nothing when you no, scan no it? No codes. No, a uh, friend of mine scanned it for me, and there's nothing coming up. Like, it last uh, August, it had a... Cranny flush, and because the cool the lines were le- the sure. grommets were leaking, so I had them replaced and had it flushed right away. And uh, yeah, it no codes have come up. Like I mean, it's hit and miss. Like is there like a big issue? Like a big issue? Like I, quick, so. you said you already did a flush. Did they do an additive in there and try you know a, a yeah. cleaner a cleaner yeah. Yeah. protectant? Yep, yep. Everything that was all done auto electric did that. In. China, so, and they're a GM affiliate, so they would know about that. They might, you know, the next step a transmission shop might want to take the valve body off and go through it and make sure all the valves are working like they're supposed to and put it back together and okay. see what happens. Because you wouldn't have a clutch that would just not work one day and work the next. It's got to be in the pressure control of it and wouldn't be electronic if electronically you're not getting any codes. Unless you've got a solenoid that is sticking sometimes and not moving when it's controlled, um, that could do it too. So when they do the valve body, typically if a transmission shop pulls a valve body, goes through it, cleans it on the bench, works all the valves, makes sure everything's working smoothly, they will replace all the solenoids in it as they're putting it back in because it's basically free labor. They're taking them off anyway, so just purchase the solenoids, put them on while they're doing it. And then, then you know you've got the control system of it operating properly, even if they haven't completely rebuilt the unit. But if the fluid's clean and not burnt, they're that's they're, what I was just going to say. Is shouldn't the, have to. What's the condition of the fluid that they took out during the flush, and what is it now? Well, they didn't say anything, and that's the thing you think they did. If there'd have been burnt, they'd have said something. Like it seems to do it more when it's warm, like when the weather's warm. When it's cold, it. It, I went for, like, during this winter, I went four months, and there wasn't an issue. And here the other day, it got up to 65, 70 above, and it did it once, uh, like, that taking off from a light. And, like I say, it's, it's hit and miss. It's 90% or 98% of the time, it's fine, but that 1% or 2%, it'll happen. And usually once, like, I'm 30 miles from Regina, and, It'll do it once on the trip for popping and going. That is, uh, that's a question I would call a radio show about. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? If I if I had something going that didn't happen most of the time, I would call and say, "What do you think?" Well, so that that's a good you're not going to find it day to day. If he has something, or any person, any listener, or customer has a problem that happens just once now and then. When you put it together with a radio show that is working in a shop right. and has a half a million listeners that all have these problems, now maybe this problem is occurring 
every hour right. when you put them all together and not just once every four months because it's one car. I, I look at 100 cars. No, they're all doing this. Did any of them have that problem and get it fixed? Sometimes we get that information back. Mm-hmm. But on this one, other than valve body sticking in there, we haven't seen it. Glenn, thanks very much for the call. Good luck. 866-594-4150. I could not find an automotive model named the Luster. Did you find anything named the Luster? No. There's. It's When you look up anything automotive related in Luster, you're off on a different <laughs> You page. see cluster. You know, you see paint, auto body. Try this new uh, car wax. It's yeah, great. A lot. So uh, if there is one, I couldn't find it in that 10 seconds. The Buick, looked, the Buick luster. In that, in the, the 15 to 20 seconds I gave it, my full effort, I couldn't find it. So it not, must not, not real. exist. Not real. <laughs> Let's talk to Troy. You're on the Under the Hood Show. Troy, what can we do for you? Morning. I've got... Uh, 2016 F-150 with the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. Got about 105,000 miles on it. And, you know, driving it through the winter, I noticed that it's starting to smoke a little bit more at, at startup, and it kind of goes away, you know, always within about five minutes. And now that it's warmed up, it, you know, there's a little bit of light smoke, but nothing really noticeable when you're driving it. Um, I started worrying about, you know, if it had a cracked head gasket or cracked head or something. Um, I bought one of the block tester kits with the blue mm-hmm. fluid and, and tried that. Um, you know, when I did it for about five minutes, the fluid never turned yellow. Um, Good. And I wasn't able to pull a whole lot of air through it. You know, I'd squeeze the bulb oh, and it yeah. would take about 10 seconds before it would uh, fill back up, you know, so I could. Right try and pull air through it again so um didn't know you know the color the fluid the color of the fluid did lighten up a little bit um from the that can know, be the normal blue. It's kind of like, are you losing okay, any coolant so, is it dis is it disappearing no. okay if it's not no, disappearing not then it, it's usually those engines have a lot of condensation build up because of the turbo pressures especially in the winter time okay. with the change in temps so that's normal it doesn't bother me even in the summer like if it's 50 degrees or lower um even closer to 60 sometimes we'll see a little bit of of a little bit of condensation smoke out the back so one thing you might want to do you know under the hood on those sometimes to if we think we've got a head gasket and we just don't see head gaskets on that engine which is a good thing for you but we will put our tester on it and then have someone hold the brake and the throttle just a little bit to get it up at about 1500 rpm while we do that test and that extra cylinder pressure will cause gases to be expelled into that tank that normally might not be there if you think there's an issue you know you got to make sure you got it up up on a hoist or blocked very well so it doesn't roll away on you but yeah you want to you want to put it under a little bit of load in order to to get that test done but i don't think if you're not losing any coolant then it's not smoking or or the smoke isn't coolant yeah that's what i'm is there any color to the smoke at all um it's mostly you know, white when I noticed it in the winter. And now I noticed when I started up, you know, it's maybe a little bit of like blue smoke just for a couple of seconds, like a really light blue. That can come from the, from the, the bypass and the PCV system, just getting a little bit of oil into the, into the intake, you know, that can do that. Also when they, uh, that's not new enough. I don't think yet to have the secondary injectors in the intake to keep the back of the valves clean. Cause once they went to that on the two sevens, then they, they do get a little rich when they first start and they can smoke and be a little gassy. Troy, thanks very much for the call. Good luck. 866-594-4150. You're listening to the under the hood show. We'll be back after this.
Get your planner out right now and schedule your next radio appointment with the Motor Medics. 866-594-4150. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you could win a hoodie, but there's one catch. You have to give us your name and address and size by joining the Hoodie Fan Club at UnderTheHoodShow.com. Chris, you know what? Joining the Hoodie Fan Club and winning the lottery have in common. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Nothing. Other than it, it's a lot of fun and yeah. it's really cool. Uh-huh. <laughs> you, you got a really good chance of winning something at the Hoodie Fan Club. That's right. You do. Um, so um, let me see if I can get this here. Ben Creter All right. is the winner. Because it's K-R-E-I-T-E-R. So Ooh. it's thinking Kreider, but it's got to be Kreider. I think it's Kreider. You think so? I think E-I is, uh, let me think about this. Yeah. I-E is E's. Yeah. So I think, E-I is I. Yeah, I think so. They'll know it. If Ben Kreider is Ooh. listening right now, he's going to say, <laughs> no, it's Kreider. Yeah. Or I, vice versa. Yeah. See, I can nail it if it's if it's something like Anacopolis or <laughs> yeah. uh, one of those I really can't. crazy <laughs> ones. They're like, man, you nailed it. But. <laughs> Um, yeah, this one, I don't, that's not one I'm, so anyways, courtesy of our friends over at Universal Technical Institute, UTI.edu. By the way, on the chat, Jason yeah. says, Russ, you're spot on with the smell of Ace hardware. There you go. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's got that, Ace is the place with that helpful, smelly hardware smell. Hardware smell. And I think you're right. I think it's the, the lawn products. I didn't say that. Russ did. Was it? Okay. Yeah. I lawn think products I, up front. They're always up front mm-hmm. when i go yeah. when, no matter which one i go to wherever i've been it's right there when when i was in detroit and very young my first hardware trips were to an ace hardware not a sponsor of under the hood by the way right but we, we would, we would go, take it though sh- mm-hmm. sh- even locally we'd do that um so we would go and right there by the front door you know i would hop up and sit on the fertilizer and say son don't sit on the fertilizer you'll break it i'm like okay and then I would kick it, and then there'd be a hole. And, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah a, so you got it. But they I would had, be very adamant about that as well. I at would that time, and now I feel like such an old person when I'm not really that old, but I think I feel like I'm an old person because mm-hmm. Ace Hardware then, this is like, you know, my, your dad would say, well, when I was a kid, they used to sell cars at Sears and Roebuck. I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> well, we didn't own. have that. But they had, Ace had a lot of stuff they don't have now. They had bicycles. They had toys for kids, like model airplanes, RC airplanes, and different things. And I think it's depending on oh, the toy on your, section at Ace, Nyberg, and Sioux Falls. On they the still have a pretty good one. Listen. Remember, yeah, when you'd walk through that, it was It like was nice. just different. Everything was like American metal if you're, stuff. And, I'm going to say this, because I've said this to my kids in the last year, and, and I've followed through with it. Go to your local Ace, I don't care where it is, and go to the toy aisle and the, the art supplies section. Yeah, yeah. It is bonkers the stuff they have it is bonkers how big their selection of art products and toys are not, ev- not everyone smoking. i think so because mine is a little one uh, and Bra- it, brandon doesn't have any toys i'm gonna go oh well, i'm stopping i think it today. goes by the area you're in yeah, but we was, have a huge like smoke we got, place well, we got two food. different we got oh. two different owners two yeah different those are groups. two different stores i think i think you just haven't checked and i'm saying this un without any information I'm, I All would right, bet I'm going, you you're my wrong. mind right now is going through every aisle at the Brandon store. Mm-hmm. I'm, yep. Well, I'm going to go I don't look. think there's any. I okay. think there's a few toys, but there's not a toy aisle. Up in I, the very front, turn yeah. left when you walk in the front door and right to the left That's behind the, the registers, there's a few. I'll keys, solve this today. Keys and paint. Yep. Let's talk no, to Todd. Uh, next to the paint. 866-594. On the wall. 4150. That guy says a bet coming on, Chris. Hey, let's talk about a Corvette. Todd, you're on the Under the Hood Show. What can we do for you? Well, I got a 71 vet my wife bought 40 years ago with a Turbo 400. When I shift it into gear, no matter it's forward or reverse, it doesn't go in easy. It just bangs. But I have a torque converter lockup problem. Well, you could have a torque converter that could, is not freewheeling like it's supposed to. could but be much simpler than that. Yeah, you could also have a... a okay, wait a second. Vacuum. No, 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 no. <laughs> Kick down rod. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this transition. How the pressure is set on this, that. This, this is the guy who said he's not that old over there. He's yeah. running. <laughs> now he's. I my neighbor had one when I was a kid. Huh. I don't think he yeah, ever drove thanks, it. Thanks, guy thanks. Runyon. <laughs> Turbo 400 had a vacuum diaphragm on the that side of set, it. Yeah, Guy Runyon, 71 yep. Corvette. Never drove it. Anyways. Yep. Um, so this was on. It was got a vacuum modulator on the passenger side front of that pan, and then it should have an yep. electric kick down that 
works off the throttle. It does have an electric kick valve, yep. but that's not working. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm I'm that vacuum modulator on it also will control your pressures in there. It's got a governor in it, but um, okay. If the governor is sticking, then it would the pressures would be high. That's under that cover on the side of the the transmit that round cover you got on the side and the passenger i believe it's been a long time since i looked yeah, at one of them I know that. pull that cover off and you get a little fluid out of there but make sure the the governors fly out and in like it's supposed to you know it's it's smooth really uh, clean it up because when they the faster it goes they they go outwards and it increases uh pressure changes based on that and also you're shifting but there's i what well, it's been so long since i messed with the 400 but i do know if you have mm. If you don't have vacuum, the pressure goes up because it thinks your foot's on the throttle. The vacuum goes away. The pressure goes up. So also a modulator that's not working properly would do that, and your pressures would change. So um, somebody that's like working on, on this hose then? You could put a vacuum gauge right at the hose down right at the transmission, yeah. tee it in and see what you got. Make sure you've got the same vacuum you got at the engine because the engine hasn't been like modified with a huge cam lately, has it? Nope. Okay. Well, I rebuilt it original. Then you should be then you should be fine. You know, if you've got you know eleven inches or more of vacuum, you should have plenty to make that thing shift like it's supposed to. But yeah, it sounds to me like it's just it's a pressure control problem. Somebody that's like working on these four hundreds every day still is going. Oh, no, it's all wrong. Just uh, right. But it's a pressure problem. Period. <laughs> that's what's going on. You've got to find out what is what is going on with the pressure and I, and it it. So if the vacuum modulator was bad and it had vacuum. So it couldn't move. That would do it too. So uh, I would guess okay. as cheap as those parts are, I would, replace them. I would go buy a new vacuum modulator and I'd make sure I've got good vacuum down there. And new I'd line, put that make in sure there. there's not any hard, crusty rubber on the end yeah, of it. Pop the cover off and make sure that the, the governor is working like it's supposed to. Put it back together and see if it's fixed. All right. Hey, we, hold we, on a second. This time. is a Berkeley yeah. Classic. Berkeley One. Okay, hold on. 50th anniversary. Guess the color of the car. Todd? Before before we ask you the color of the car, don't tell us. No, I not. have a I have a couple yes no questions that I need answered. By you now. will not let me do that. Hold on, hold on. I'm, Has I'm it been it? insured hold by Berkeley One Classics yes. for fifty years? Everybody, calm down. Is it the original color? Yes. Okay, then I have no further questions, and we may proceed. What color, Shannon? Do you think this seventy one Corvette is gold? Gold. Oh. <laughs> Russ, what do you think? Well, I was all say, I Guy Runyon's car was brown. Maybe you call it gold, but I would call it more of a tan like color, a bronze, not gold. Maybe? Gold. This was more of a bronze. Yeah, because I think I think we're all thinking the same thing, right? That it's not just a color; it's a metallic, weird color that those Corvettes. I'm talking were, right? darker than a number two pencil. But like, when he says gold, are you talking no, about no? no number I'm talking two about gold, more like a brown. And, okay, they're, they're like a goldish. Uh, Buckskin, and I'm picturing like a, that's what I was thinking the metallic green that was all right, fine. And I'm changing my color completely because it's too close to Shannon. I'm just gonna say it's good old black. All right, Todd, what color oh. is the Corvette? Sea foam green. There you Thank go, you Chris. Very much. That's not very metallic, it's though. green. Ah, uh, was it is it that that kind of Corvette shimmery green mm. or is it a solid green? It's a, I guess you'd call it a shimmery. Yeah. It's a limited edition number paint. Yeah, I thank you. It Todd. was only produced on like twelve hundred cars. Mm -hmm. I nailed that one. Yep. Yeah, Chris, you win. Oh yeah, <laughs> you get to pay his premium with Berkeley <laughs> One for for a year. First, first and last month free. Todd, thanks very much for the call. Eight six six five nine four. Good job, Chris. I feel uh, I felt pretty good about that one. And that one, the seventy one, is like the. That's the classic like Corvette summer stingray style, right? Pretty close to that. Pretty close. Yeah. Yep. yeah. C3 866 594 4150. Let's go to Oklahoma and talk to Mike. You're on the end of the hood show, Mike. What can we do for you? <laughs> yeah, guys. Thanks for taking my call. I really appreciate the show. Yeah, I've, I got a 2002 Jeep Liberty. I did uh, just rear wheel drive. I did a brake job on it. I replaced the bought a kit front and rear. So it's got the front, you know, disc brakes, rear drum. Uh, so the kit came, of course, the new drums, the springs. Uh, I replaced the rear uh, cylinders. I replaced the front calipers. What I've, I've got going on is the when I go to apply the brakes, everything seems fine up until 
there's a tight window, if you will, where the brakes just kind of come on sudden. It'll at times kind of do a little nose dive and the back brakes uh, lock up. The wife doesn't want to drive it. I've kind of trained myself how to work around this. But how do you know uh, if a forcing valve or I don't have any symptoms of a master cylinder issue? I'm sure it's the original one in there, but um, I'm kind of perplexed at what kind of to do next. I bled it several times. I've re-greased the caliper pins a couple of times. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of at a loss, but uh, it's just got a nice, you know, steady, straight stop. It'll do that, but it just has this really, I guess, ir irritating or issue with, like I said, with the brakes just come on heavy and grab and uh, I really don't know what really what to do next but um, what what about a proportioning valve or something I've overlooked or what what any suggestions there when those brakes come on heavy what happens if you take your foot off the brake oh it it'll it'll release yeah it's immediately not, it's not grabbing okay yeah pretty much yeah yeah um, I'd say so I'm wondering if the brake booster is not going bad. So when you're stepping on that, there's a there's a metering valve inside of the booster. And when you step on the pedal, okay. what happens is you step on the pedal, it closes a valve, and it allows engine vacuum to pull the pedal to the floor to assist you. So the engine now is sucking the pedal down instead of your foot. And then when you release it, it immediately opens that to air vacuum and blocks the engine vacuum and lets the pedal up. But if you've got one that has a failure inside of it, when you step on it, it'll pull a little too far and apply the brakes quickly. Even though you let off of it, mm. it'll shut it off. And we've put on a few boosters that have had weird issues on these vehicles. So I'm just wondering if that might be what's going on with it. Uh, just a, just a okay. thought. And it, you know, really the only way that we've had some to verify was we get in an area we can drive it where we don't have to worry about people around and we will disconnect the vacuum line right. from the booster and plug it on the engine side so it's not leaking. And then we drive it and use the brakes in the manual position without the vacuum assist and see if they work. And if they stop right. smoothly the whole rate of travel, then there's something's going on in the booster. you got to kind of isolate what's going on. Otherwise, it's going to be really tricky. It's going to be disconnecting some lines and installing pressure gauges and finding out where is that excess pressure coming on is the abs pump turning on and not opening up valves like it should or something for some reason I mean, there's a lot of diagnosis but luckily there's not a lot of things that fail on these we've seen abs right. hydraulic control unit issues and we've seen uh, booster issues those are the two big things we see on these okay i'll uh, i'll look at the booster route try that thing first that's where i'd go mike thanks very much for the call good luck 866-594-4150. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we want to hear from you on the End of the Hood Show.
Prepare to learn something. You're going under the hood. 866-594-4150. Before we talk to Jim, I just want to go back to the hardware store comment a little oh, bit. Oh, no. No, this was this is my idea. Oh, this no. is my million-dollar idea. And I we talked about this on my uh, with my Monday through Friday work. Uh, if I had a hardware store, no matter what it was, any franchise, doesn't matter. And no matter where it was, if it were in a strip mall or an old, I would take the hardware portion of the store and I would put down a wood floor just in at least those aisles. So as you're walking back to the bins, the floor creaks a little because that's, you know what I mean? You'd want that feel to be that. Yep. Imagine that if you walked into your brand new Ace Hardware, beautiful big store, but back there, it was just a little more crowded. The bins were a little more cramped and the wood floor creaked. You'd be, you'd think you were back in time. What if you didn't ever know that? Who doesn't, who doesn't know that? That's my kids. Yeah. They, they deserve to, they deserve that magic too, I think. And you have to ask the guy. There's no. The one we had in Detroit there had, what had the wood floor. I need flat washers. Yeah. And he's like, what do you, what kind of flat washers? Oh, this is what you need. Here's a few. That'll be six cents. Do you want to put a lock nut on that? (laughs) 866-594-4150. 866-594-4150. Let's talk to Jim. You're on the Under the Hood Show. Jim, what can we do for you? I was wondering how to replace the heater core on a 91 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Can that be done under the hood or has it got to be under the, take it in under the dash inside the car? Okay. This is a good question. Yeah, this is a good question. It's a lot of work. You got to take the dash. It comes. It's under the dash. Mm. You got to pull the glove box out. You got to pull the panel out underneath. You got to pull the blower motor out. You got to push the, take the body control module out from underneath the dash and move it out of the way and then shove the wiring way up and drain the coolant and pull all the bolts out of the inside of the heater box and take the heater box and pry the cover off underneath. And then you disconnect the heater hoses under the hood and then you pull the core out. That's about a, that's about a two and a half hour job. That's for what me. I want in my YouTube videos. I want my YouTube videos to be a minute and a half long with all Thank the you. info in it. That's what he just summed it all up in 10 seconds. Is that better? Because then you have to do a lot of pausing and starting. It's, I'm not going to do, do you it. Want, you want splits that are longer to find easier. I, I need to get to the end Chapters. to see if I can do it. You should have two videos. Whole, yeah, have I one want, long one yep. and then have the short one. Here's the short version. Out, bolts, pull, drain. Remove, wipe clean. Watch new. out for this. Uh, yeah. Now, Jim, and then here's that is the whole thing. Jim, that is not what you wanted to hear, correct? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's 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 a lot. If it's a very small leak, I would strongly suggest using K Seal in that. If a it partner of ours. Yes. But if it's running out, <laughs> forget it. It's too big. You're not going to fix it without replacing the core. The hardest part about that is the small amount of room. Now, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, as, as old as we are, at least now I just crawl into the dash, but you got to remember I'm an athlete when it comes to He's working on cars, athlete. right? Because the thing about it this way, Chris will agree because I am under a dash at least three or four times a week. Yeah. I'm used to it. Now, yeah. if. I wasn't under a dash three or four times you a week. You might get a cramp oh, and be stuck there. It's going to suck because there's some cars that are really hard for me when I really have a to spasm. get A spasm. You're going to have a spasm. So, yes, and then you don't want one of those while you're upside down. <sighs> so I would say for you, if you're going to do this at home, Jim, take the four bolts out of the passenger seat and push the seat back as far as it'll go. That's going to get, or take it out of the car. Have a friend help you take it out. That is going to give you an extra three or four feet of room in there. Unless it's so crusty under the seat that that becomes a bigger project than the heater core. You could right. stick to the floor, <laughs> like like go kart racing on a you know the coke way they syrup. put the coke syrup yeah. on the ground. That'd be gross. And we have some cars like that to come in. <laughs> we pull some seats and we're like, oh, you know. oh no. So, but pull the seat out, and you can get under the dash much easier to work, because it's it's going to be tight. But you can get if you take your time. Do it slow. Yeah, you can get, I think at home, you know, there's nothing that's like super skillful in that job, but it is time consuming. One of the biggest things I'd be concerned with, with the 91 DeVille, the probably the biggest one out of all of them is that 
when I drain the coolant out of that heater core, I'm probably going to get myself a couple hose clamp pliers to clamp both the heater core lines off close to the core when I take them off because I do not want to drain that engine and refill it and have it go through that thermal shock because those engines, the 4.1s, the 4.5s, the 4.9s, which are you played with a lot. They are extreme failures, time bombs waiting to happen as far as head gasket issues, and they are not fixable. Once they go, they're gone. So they require a coolant supplement to be put in them every time the coolant is drained. Every time they, they come tablets from the factory. The GM would give yep. you. Yep. So big, big lozenges. I would suggest if you put a heater core in it, do that, block those lines off. But then when you put them back on, put a bottle of K Seal in it when you run it, just to protect the system, because that will be your additive. Jim, we have scared the death out of you about this car. Can I just back this all the way up to the beginning? Why are you putting a heater core in it? What's your pro- What's your failure? Because of the leak. <laughs> and is it a, like uh, Russ device. asked the question, is it a bad leak or is it just, is it seeping or what, how bad is it? Well, the first uh, I noticed that, you know, the, that particular car for some reason had a little bitty white basket right along the wall. Yeah. Yep. And uh, at that time, that that time the antifreeze ran right into that waste basket. So I never made a mess on the floor. Well. So then I put, I put cedar in there and it held for a while and then. Then I started steaming up my windshields and all that stuff. Which steel? What sealer did you use? I some guy recommended for a Cadillac. It was just like three round pellets or something. Try it. Just it might be a little too big of a leak, but before you tear this thing apart, it's a partner of ours. We use it at the shop. Get a bottle of K Seal, letter K Seal, and put it right in your coolant and report back. Yeah, because it's 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 worth trying for sure. For the amount of labor this takes to do, the age of the car, the value of the car, the the number of times you're going to cuss and swear and get a cramp or a spasm, maybe a maybe a finger hang or like a cuticle that's going to get Might ripped get a back, mm-hmm. bad it, in the process. It's worth trying. It's worth a bottle of K Seal. Jim, thanks very much for the call. Good luck. And that is that we've had that conversation. Russ was. I he just popped under the dash of some vehicle we were talking about and I I was amazed and I was like how do you I don't even know how to and it was he knew how to position himself so he could get there I didn't even have that knowledge in me to put my butt in the right spot to get under there and he's like just turn okay and do you remember this yeah and I was I got in he's like okay now Scoot over and rotate your hips. I was like, oh, now it's comfortable. This is fine. He's like, yeah, we do it every day. I'm used to it. So you learn. That's a, You're going to yeah. learn that one, Jim. 866-594-4150. Let's talk to Cody. You're on the end of the hood show. Cody, we got one minute. What can we do for you? I'll be quick. I got a 2022 Ram with the 5.7 Hemi. This is the uh, fourth Ram I've had in, in a row with the Hemi. Just got it. It's got about 30,000 miles. It makes a strange noise um, when I accelerate under, you know, really, really heavy acceleration. Uh, makes the same noise through all the gears. I can see the transmission shifting via the status on the dash. Uh, it's under warranty. I took one of the technicians from the dealership for a ride and just said, "Hey, it's making a weird noise. I don't know if it's supposed to or not." He was a little bit unsure as well. I have an appointment on Monday. I want to steer him the right direction so I get it fixed if I need to. Is it an e torque? It's not, but. That was one of the first things that they asked. Is it, uh, and, and it winds like a supercharger? Winds just like a supercharger. I'd say it's yeah. normal. The, I've, I've got a few friends that have these and say, Test drive another one. What is that noise? And they're like, eh, they all have it. So it's, it's normal. And I, I don't know where exactly it's coming from, but I think it has something to do with the belt drive system on the engine, just the design of it. Um, more pronounced in the e-torque than the standard engine but yeah i've i've heard that whine in our customers vehicles and friends have talked about it too so i, I bet if you go down there and they check it out and they say it's fine you maybe drive another one that's they like have say on drive another one with the same options and, that's and the, see and then that's you don't the, have to worry about it the good news is he's probably going to be able to find another one that's similar mm-hmm. that sometimes is a tough i think they all do it. tough prospect but this one should be fine cody good luck thanks very much for the call that'll do it for this hour of the under the hood show until next time 
You can find us at underthehoodshow.com. Don't forget, you can watch the show on our YouTube channel. All right. Yeah, you can watch the show sometimes, sometimes. on our YouTube channel. Welcome. Boy, today started off weird. Mm-hmm. We kicked off that YouTube channel. We said, hey, we're going to just say hi before we start and go on the radio so you know exactly what we're doing. Because you're like, what are those guys doing? Why do they have commercial breaks? And what's up? It's like, because mm-hmm. we're on the radio. So we did it. We didn't do anything different than normal other than we pushed a button and talked. And then the system, our video server extensive system we have here just crashed. So it took like 10 minutes to get it restarted. And by that time, I think it started a new YouTube thing. So if you missed the first 15 minutes, just go back and watch it. Mm-hmm. This is a good example of sometimes something breaks and it's just a coincidence. Like is, is we it, talk about this it? with cars. All, I think absolutely. I okay. put a, so Chris has been, how long has he been bitching about his radio controls? I mean, this is, oh, I'm talking yeah. to you, Shannon, not, oh, not, yeah. not Chris. I'm talking, you know, I'm for talking, quite a, talking I, to I'd you. I'd say for, yeah. Years? Years. Yeah. So first of all. No, you can't talk now. Okay. Yeah, no, you know. So it broke. So I said, he goes, as he says, every time he bring, every time he brings his car in. Yeah. Every, he said, oh, maybe you could take a look at, the, I know you said you could, and but well, you know, I just, I, fine, whatever. So I ordered the part, I put it in and damn, it worked. Radio's on the front seat. It's playing something. And. The buttons are working. Everything's doing it. It's great. So I reach over, grab the face of the radio, and I'm going to lift it up and put it in the dash. Well, I grab it, and it shuts off. That's normal. Happens all the time with radios. You know, put it in the dash. I bolt it all together. It's finished. I hit the source button to turn it on. The thing doesn't come on. Oh, my gosh. You can talk now, Chris. So it doesn't come on. I'm like, what's going on? I don't smell smoke. No noise. I pull it out. I check all the fuses. There's power at the radio. The fuse in the back of the radio is good. Nothing's pinched. It just decided it was dead. I mean, I was like, I even had to look up, like, come on, I know how to turn a radio on. And I was looking at, and all the buttons are worn off. So I'm trying to figure out which one's is which. The, is this the aftermarket that you'd put in there? Oh, uh, and it's, and it's a cheap aftermarket. It sells for $88 now. It's really gone down. Uh, it's no CD, nothing. It's just a tuner and Bluetooth. So you can have Bluetooth. Yeah. So it's a little fancier now and it's almost done. So yeah. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Can I talk now? Yeah, yes, you're, you're good. good to um, talk. Yeah, I have not. I have not complained. I have not complained at all. You've asked vigorously. I asked. We looked up the part once, and then I just didn't bring it back for like a year. So it has. Yeah, been- it was about that long since you changed the oil. <laughs> we're, all, we're all aware of it. It really was. <laughs> he had 2,000 miles left on his oil change when he came in. Really? He says, that can't be right. And so I, he told I you looked not and to I change said it, it was then, just right? there three weeks yeah. ago, Chris. Yeah, that is the, because I, I just put 2,000 miles on it, oh. and uh, almost, and I, I'm still in the window. I feel pretty good. But uh, I was talking about the video, how we had this, we did something different today that has nothing to do with anything, and the video didn't work, and yeah. it's just coincidental, because all we did was start one minute early, but it threw the whole thing into chaos. You and didn't it, leave well enough alone. It seems like it had to be something we did, but I don't think it was. It wasn't. It was just it was just one of those things that, that had a well, we had to restart because one of the cameras was down. And the only way to restart the camera is to just restart the system. But you're already streaming on YouTube. You can't just restart. Mm-hmm. So I tried to restart it like three times, but it was still trying to stream, so it kept crashing. So I had to shut it completely off, wait for the stream to end, and then restart it. So People went, huh, there was 15 minutes before the show. I didn't know. Why did you guys start? It seems like a weird opening mm-hmm. to the show. So, eh, sometimes it happens. But, hey, we passed 6,000 subscribers on our YouTube Probably channel. down to 5,000 after and I'll, that. I'll say this. I want to say this. If you haven't, if you're, you should go check out, if you haven't, don't have comments open on the YouTube page or whatever, mm-hmm. you should check one out because there's one from Ron right now that I don't even want to get into, Ron. You make a good point and no one... We don't, yeah, we, there's a comment there that Ron makes that I, Shannon, you and I don't even want to talk about. So, so we're going to leave it like that. We're just going to leave it like that. You can go read it for yourself and see what Ron has to say. Cause it's upsetting. Can you see it? That's what, Oh, yeah. And it's, yeah, we know Ron. I feel like Ron is not, he's not coming down on you and I at all. Oh. Ron is not making fun of us. He's making fun of himself too. 
but that's a bit of a sore subject, let's just say. Yeah. And we don't need to we don't need to address that on the show. <laughs> Did you see it yet? No, but okay, good. <laughs> I I can I can only imagine <laughs> what it would be. Are you, are you deleting it? No, I'm not. That's, that's no, I got I got to read it first. No, oh, I think I think Doug's putting it up on the board. Oh. That's what he's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he was about to do. Is Doug putting it up on the board? Uh Yeah, he was about to. Yeah. Oh, now you got us. Now we're coming in on the phone just fine. Ron says, "Can I send my hairbrush to Russ so he can give it a workout?" I comb my hair with a washcloth these days. See, and I don't have it. All I see is from from Ron. It says, "I see you. You're live on YouTube." California says, "Hi." Yeah, my. I haven't had a haircut since you got November. That's a, that's a lot going on that's right now. That's the old one. The on old the haircut? Current, no, that's the yeah, old one. Yeah, I haven't seen the new now one. Now the new one, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I got my haircut before, just before Thanksgiving, and then, you know, time got Is this got the busy. longest? When's the last time your hair was this long? 84? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, it was much longer than this when I started working here. Yeah, got, it, it was. My, it you was down to, pictures, down to here. This is the longest I've remembered it for a while. Yeah. But see, it's it's so short in the back that it's growing on the top so it's a it's like a good lawn now it's about it's about four inches long on the top now. yeah see it's like lion but in the last in the last two weeks it's grown like an inch i don't know what happened but it just all of a sudden it's the weather yeah fingernails and hair just kind of went but Humidity fingernails i chopped them babies right off get outside yeah my, i don't know i'll say it, my grass has grown like a foot in the last two days art says you need a haircut i'm like <laughs> yeah and then he just started looking like Wow, the hair is so thick. And he's like, <laughs> Did he touch it? No, he just he like put his hand did up like he, this. He did like, an air touch? He's like, Wow. And I'm like, I'm like, Yeah, whatever. But nobody said that in probably 20 years. And now they're like, Wow. And my wife likes it that way. So I'm like, You know what? Radio people, they just have that long hair. Yeah. I think, well, before we left for St. Louis, Tammy was watching the YouTube channel, my wife, and she, had, she goes, She goes, Russ has got a lot of hair going on right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My wife said the same thing. We watched the so when we're on vacation, um, you know, and I if I get up like first thing in the morning and it's all a mess, I'll just take a brush and I'll comb it like straight up when we go down to eat at the buffet or whatever <laughs> at the at the hotels. And people will go, "Wow, that's crazy!" But now if I do that, it's like this big, so I look like you know, Marty. We've got to go back to the future. <laughs> or Kramer or something. It's nuts. But my grandson, my grandson has hair He's got bigger the, than this now. Yeah. So, so I sent a picture to my daughter and she's like, wow, you just look like, <laughs> you look like your grandson. I'm like, no, he looks like me. Where do you think he got that hair from? All right. You're back. Welcome back. It was a uh, rough having you gone for two weeks. Although it, it did, it did go well. well I'm glad you joke. guys. Yeah. I, I know you guys, you guys seriously can, can carry this, the show better with you two than just me and Chris. Because what? Because of How Russ's, dare you? Well, Russ's technical knowledge is so good. I, it's just different. It's different when one of us uh-huh. is gone, no matter who it is, and it it just makes it. It's it's qu- most quicker when it's just the two of us because it's like I have a question. Okay, I'd say there's question. less okay. question. There's less Band? BS in the answers when when Russ is here. Oh yeah, because I'm not. Yeah, I'm dancing around subjects when he's mm-hmm. not here, and something. Then he just. I'm waiting for him just to like strike and just dive right into this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, even I'm dancing around the edge, uh-huh. trying to decide if I'm going to get go in for the kill. Yeah. I'm afraid that if I go in for the kill on the answer and I'm wrong, I'm mm-hmm. going to be so wrong. And then I just wait for Russ to come in and just he strikes like like a, a late like like a, a you're scalpel. fishing like you're deep sea fishing and you get a strike. Well, we can pretend like we're you're right. the prep doctor. Yeah. And he's the surgeon yeah. who comes in. And, oh yeah, ninety yeah. percent of giving a good answer is 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 conviction. When you, when oh. you it's like I am positive I've but got it. Right. But I, I need, I need to be convicted, or else I'm not going convicted. <laughs> Shannon, Shannon would used to, I don't. Know, he used to say it more than lately, but you know, he used to say, "Damn, you're right, like almost all the time." But <laughs> when you're wrong. Holy <laughs> smokes, you're way wrong. It's like you're not even anywhere in the country. You're like, well, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, well, I'd it's say usually, that's fair. And usually it's because you maybe didn't, you did not absorb what they were saying. Question, yeah. 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 That's usually what happens. If you're way off, it's because you didn't hear. You I was didn't probably hear. thinking of a different you question. Are. No, that's was, exactly what it is. You know, drawing a picture here or something. No, like, that's exactly what? what happens. Oh, that diesel needs a. Well, this morning I was thinking he was, the whole time I was thinking he was talking about his EcoBoost. He was talking about his diesel, and then finally at the very end, I went, 
Oh yeah, no, that's fine because it's on the. <laughs> yeah. It's going to the ground. It's yeah. not the turbo. Well, that's because you were busy trying to figure out YouTube. Mm-hmm. It wasn't working. You guys were doing that. It wasn't working. All right. Well, welcome back. Um, <sighs> once we go off now, uh, off the air, I'm gonna tell you about the eclipse. So I hope you have the day free. Because you talked to everybody else last week. Yeah, about yeah you yeah. talked about it on the air already. Yeah, the week oh, yeah, before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you I, have any questions that you need me to answer before? Do you want to? I, I have one question. Uh-huh. I, seriously, one question. Would you do it again? Okay. Assuming, let's say there was an <laughs> there, eclipse. No, it's just, there was an eclipse next week. Mm-hmm. So it's like really fresh. Would you do it again? That is a very fair question because when we were on this trip, it was a long road trip. There was times, there were times when I thought this might not be worth it. This, the, the, pace we set for ourselves and the things we were doing i thought maybe this wasn't and i had to kind of convince my wife to go she missed the last one and i think she was okay missing and i was like no um and you tell her it could be therapeutic i did i would say that now it was absolutely worth it and she would agree and it's actually come up since then out of the blue she's brought up the next one in a joking manner, but, um, yeah, it is. Okay. I stand by my, I would, I just, there were times I wasn't sure. Like, what is this really as good as I remember it? And it is, it was. And yeah. And now the next one, I'll say this. Are you going to fly somewhere for another one that's sooner? Um, I would say it's not out of the question. It's not, no, (laughs) but it's not out of the okay, question. Those two questions. I, and now I that my question count. that twenty year, the next one here is in twenty years, in that we could drive to easily. And now I feel like maybe I, maybe I will live that long and go. Yeah, it's a goal. <laughs> yeah, make, make yeah. that a goal. We're uh, driving to that thing in when I'm seventy four mm-hmm. or whatever, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was great, and the drive was good. We figured that stuff. Out. Yeah, it was fun. Good. And I saw. A lot of a lot of automotive thinking going on, including bumper to bumper traffic at 85, 90 miles an hour for a hundred miles. That was interesting. A lot of people going on the way back with their accidents because they were blinded. Uh, uh, there were a few accidents because of the amount of traffic, but yeah. not too bad. It, Nobody that had like welding eye or anything. No, I don't think. Okay. I don't think so. That's a good question. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. I think that's Russ checked out. You want to hear my story about leaving my phone in the lift? Oh, yeah, please. Yes. Just stupid. Are you in D.C. at this time? Washington, D.C. Okay. I finished my congressional visits. Typically, this is what happens. We have a briefing back at the hotel in the evening, or early evening. Some people will stay overnight and fly out. I chose to fly out. I wanted to get home. I've been gone so much. I wanted to get home. I have a question for you about Congress people. Did you meet other Congress people besides your own? I only met my delegation. Okay. I was going to um, go with someone that had never done this before. Okay. And one of our staff members did instead because I've okay. done it enough now. I'm pretty experienced at you know, kind of how, how it goes. My question is, do they all, because I know a few, and they all make me feel seen. Like do, when I do. talk to them, I am amazed at how well they- They do a great job of that. And then I, I wondered if that was They're also really the case. They're really good at that. Yeah, Some, but you know, I've talked to other folks though that from other states they didn't feel that way. Okay, but our delegation does really good at that. Okay, so anyway, I was there, done, and I, 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 one of the things I love about that trip, and I always have, is I usually have about two and a half to three hours that I can just wander the National Mall, mm-hmm. and I love that. It's just you can just sit, stand there and there again. We talk about the city and I felt safe. I felt fine in that area. There was, you know, obviously they're very well looked after. Right. And so I'm wandering around. I, I dropped into the Smithsonian for an hour. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And just National looked, Air and Space looked Museum. Around. I did, no, I didn't go to that site. I went, I went over to the, to <clears> the, uh, which one was the flag in there? Was Old Glory right in the no, front? No, or? no, no, no. I went right in. I walked into the, uh, where Phoenix, the big whale is at. Okay. Um, land and, or, uh, natural natural history. Yeah. So anyway, I was in there for about an hour and all of a sudden I'm looking at my watch. I'm like, huh, I better get going. My flight boards at six 15. It was four 30. I better get going. So I get outside and it immediately starts raining. <laughs> and so I'm 
thinking, I need to get out of this because it's a cluster in front of the Smithsonian. Sure. Forget a Lyft or an Uber, it's a cluster. So I walked out, went down the block, and I got in front of the IRS building. Streets are busy, but- Nobody's there. But clear address, clear clear beacon, little hoop I could hump under if there was a rain got heavier. Mm -hmm. And so I hit my Lyft driver there. Busy. Didn't get one right away. So by the time I got back to the hotel, it was five o'clock. But along the journey with my my driver, Mohammed, who I got to know very well in my 20 minutes we were in the car, not only was he a super good person, he needed help with his with his car. Okay. And I always tell people about our, our radio show and our podcast, and I usually have an under the hood show business card because no matter what city I'm in, they can pop the podcast on. And, mm-hmm. and it's amazing how many of those Uber and Lyft drivers, they're, they're interested in automotive because they, right. that's their living. Mm-hmm. And so we, uh, we should do like a discount or something for Uber and Lyft when they get parts or something. I'm just thinking about that. But um, they have, um, he's got a door on his car that's got a big dent in it. I didn't see it when I got in, and it's the door I got in. Mm-hmm. I was just preoccupied with holding my phone to make sure that he knew, you know, making the contact. I got in, and he had been told it was going to cost him thousands of dollars to get his right rear door fixed on his 19 Corolla. And I looked at it after we got out. I said I would give him some advice, but along the way, I told him, I said, gosh, 19 Corolla, rear door, we could find a door. I got a friend of mine, m M&M and Auto Parts in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I go, you know where Fredericksburg's at? He goes, I live in Fredericksburg. Mm-hmm. I said, Perfect. I go, they're on the same network as I am, PRP network. I just toured their place not that long ago. They can help you out. They could find you a right rear door for this 19 Corolla, I bet you, for a couple hundred bucks in black. I, I said, maybe 300 or 400 at the most. I said, in black. I said, it might have a ding or two, but you hang that on there, get your buddies to help you. You're going to have that car fixed. You got a little bit of damage on your dog leg. Fine. So we get out of the car. He comes out. I show him what I'm talking about. Um, We do our thing. He shakes my hand. He's very thankful. I just saved him a whole bunch of money. And I go into the hotel knowing it's five o'clock now. And I've got- What time do you have to be there? 6.15, Ronald Reagan National Airport. You're flying out at 6.15? is my boarding time. Okay. Okay. So I'm cutting it close. That's me. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to cut it close. I take those chances. I take an hour and 15 to boarding. You're- you're well ahead of your normal game. Yeah, so I go in, and I go to our, rent, our, our reconnaissance room where we're going to meet, and nobody there. I'm like, huh. So typical Shannon, like now, I have to pee. So I go into the bathroom, and a bad habit that I have that drives my wife crazy is when I pee, I grab my phone to see if I have any messages. I mean, to me, that's two minutes of downtime. I can use it. I, I get ready, and I'm starting my, my duties, and I grab for my phone, and I don't have it. So this has been a grand total of about 35 seconds. So I accelerated that part of the duties, and I, and I went outside, and as I looked outside, I could see, because I knew where my phone was, I had laid it in the back seat when I got out to look at his car to help him. And so I watched the Toyota Corolla driving up the street. I handed my packet I had with me to the valet guy, and I said, hold this. And I took off like Forrest Gump. Like O.J. Simpson through an air force with the Samson. Literally, run, literally <laughs> running down the street to catch that guy. And as I got close enough where I thought I was going to win, the light changed and I watched him drive away. <sighs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm right here in the middle of Washington, D.C. I got a flight that I need to get moving soon. And all my stuff is on that phone. Yeah. Boarding pass, everything. Everything. Yeah. I had my watch on then, I realized. So I'm like, okay, lo- locate iPhone. So I do the locate, and I could see it's still close. Ping iPhone to find it. Mm-hmm. So I'm pinging the crud out of it. You know, only 20% battery left on my phone, I could see. Mm-hmm. So I'm pinging, pinging, pinging with my watch. And, I, and I, by then, I dejectedly do the, the jog walk back to the valley. I, I had went about a block and a half. I realized that I did pull a hamstring when I got on the plane. I, I, I've recovered from that since then. And I knew this guy would want to help me. And I was kind of surprised he hadn't come back yet. The valet early on had said, why don't you call your phone? And I told him, no, I'm going to do this first. And so we got into this little loop of trying to get a hold of, of uh, Lyft customer service. Well, there is no such thing as Lyft customer service anymore for an 800 number. You have to get on your app sure. to get to customer service. Yeah, I can't do it on my watch because I've never put the Lyft app on my watch so I don't know the password to be able to put into that. So I'm in my mind, I'm, I, there's other things I, if I think about, it, I could have solved quicker there, but in my franticness, I didn't get that down. Finally, the valet hands me his phone. He said, call your phone. So I call my phone. 
Muhammad answers. He goes, I've been waiting for you to call. I didn't know whose phone this was. <laughs> he goes, if, if he Could goes, this been is, there I, yeah, he said, well, this is, I go, this is Shannon. I was just in there. He goes, he goes, I'll be back there. Just let me finish my ride. I'll be right back. So 528, I got my phone back <laughs> and I had to go through very busy traffic to get to Ronald Reagan. And I got to the gate at 610. There was a delay for the flight. I was fine. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but that is a frantic feeling. Oh, I can't imagine. It just, you're, I'm in a strange city and my boarding passes, my everything is, I could watch it. It never got more than 0.6 miles away. I was watching my phone move around. My next step was I was going to pay one of them valet guys, who, somebody with a car, and we were going to go f- follow Flag and again. find it. That would have been my next step. That would have been better if I wouldn't have had this time constraint on me. Right. Yeah. So don't do that. Just don't do that. We're always very early. My wife and I, we go to the airports. We but wanna- Mohammed did not give me the ride. I asked him. He had to get going. He had already accepted another Right. He got a tip, nice tip, a hug, and a handshake. I bet. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And along with the valet guy that borrowed me the phone and the bellman that held, held my bags, that I, I, I was $100 shorter by the time I got out of that hotel. <laughs> yeah, I bet, yeah. But I was very happy to give it to him because they were all extremely happy, extremely helpful, and extremely nice. But uh-huh. don't do that. Nope. Don't leave your phone in a, in a taxi, no. Uber, Lyft in Washington, D.C., or any large city. Not a good idea. Uh-uh. I got lucky. Very, that's amazing, yeah. Yeah. And pulled a hammy. I literally, I, I sat down on the plane, finally, I was just like, oh. And, oh. and I had to get up and go to the bathroom at some point during the flight. I'm like, oh, that doesn't feel good. Left hamstring, not good. Yeah, don't take off from a dead sprint when you're 54 years old either, and you haven't <laughs> we were- sprinted for a long time. And I exercise pretty regularly, but I don't sprint. It's a different, yeah. different thing. I, I relived all the spoofs in my head a week ago when, you know, when OJ died. <laughs> Oh, and yeah. you know, just forget about everything. Just think about the the funny, the funny parts. Remember, he used to be the <laughs> spokesman for was it Samsonite and was it Avis? Hertz, Hertz, Hertz. Yeah, Hertz. And Lee. now it's uh, it's what's his name? The old old guy, football player. You heard it from him. Love Hertz from uh, Tom Brady. Tom Brady. There you okay. go. So it was OJ. So right when he, well, let's just say he lost the contract with Hertz <laughs> for whatever reason. You know the thing. Anyways, Saturday Night Live did a great skit and they show OJ running through the airport like they would show in the commercials to get to Hertz and he's running. This. And the kid this kid goes, Hey OJ and he goes, Huh? And he trips over a Samsonite bag right on his face. Boom. And then they show the door closing and he's he's like, I missed my flight. <laughs> I was like, ooh did you see the memes of the stretch limousine Bronco that came out right away? I have not seen any <laughs> no. of that. I just, I just know the whole. Our buddy Paul Erickson. Oh yeah, he put. The, he, I don't know where he got it from, but it oh, was a, I did see Paul. It was a stretch limo white Bronco, and he said, "Too soon." <laughs> <laughs> they have, they have the white Bronco in the uh, crime museum in. Uh, uh, Pigeon Forge. Smoky Mountains, and I got a picture of it. Yeah, on Yeah, they they paid it, they, they bought that at yeah. auction, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they, they actually have a bunch of cool. The latest now is that it's on there. loan to that. It's on loan. It's yeah, still yeah. All the cars there are on it's loan. Not, oh, they I don't know. They bought it at auction, maybe. All right. So yeah, and there's signs for everything, but they've got like a back to the one of the Back to the Future cars in there. Um, you know, there there's the actual Bronco. Oh, that's cool. Picture of it. See, anyways, it's sitting in there, but there's there's tons of. They got a James Bond car in there. Um, you know, everybody's got a Dukes of Hazard car, whether it was ever used on the set. I don't know. It's like everybody has one. I know they had hundreds of those, didn't they? I don't know, yeah, for, for sets, but 120 or something. Um, yeah. So, you know, speaking of that, I wonder if our friend down there at Trans Am Specialties got rebuilt yet. They had he, the fire. He did. I'm, I've been watching his uh, Instagram page. Because I, I would just, and he had a nice place, but. Boy, if it was just a little nicer, that place could have been amazing because yeah. of the cars he had. The building just wasn't as amazing yeah, exactly. as the cars. But in the back, he had a, you couldn't make it, mm. but they had a, uh, <laughs> the Fast and the Furious, the the first movie, they had the original charger used on the set. I got to walk out for a second. And the engine was fake. Remember that bathroom thing? It had a, it had a, <laughs> you know, the big supercharged Hemi engine in it. 
it was fake. It was a Chevy 350, and they had like a fake dressing of a supercharger okay. on top of it with a fake belt and everything that went through the hood. So on camera, and I took a picture of it, and on camera it looked amazing. It looked like a looked real, but in person it's not. It's kind of like when you go to Disney. There's Chris, a lot of that. You see the, the movie sets, yeah, and you go, "Well, that looks horrible." And then you pick up your phone and go, "Oh, it looks like just like it did in Star Wars." Exactly. Yeah, but it's not. They're made to look good on film. But in person, they look like, well, what they are, a piece of wood that was carved and painted or something. Mm-hmm. And the sets are just different. But there's so much, so many cool car things. I got to get back to Michigan because the I've not been to the Henry Ford Greenfield Village Museum in decades. And from what I understand, so much more has been added to yeah. that whole area. And now I just saw that Detroit GM has moved out of the Renaissance Center. They, they took over a bunch of buildings, but lately they they were down to one and a half of the, I think, seven building complex that they used to occupy. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be leased out to other people. They're going to keep the ownership, I guess, of it is what they were saying. But they moved down to a new building, which was the location of their original building in the Highland Appliance building, I think it was, down off mm-hmm. of Woodward Avenue where they have the Woodward Dream Cruise, which is amazing. That was cool when I was there. Lots of years ago. Yeah. And it's still, I still have friends every year. They're like, hey, when are you guys coming from the show to check out the Woodward Dream Cruise? And I'm like, uh, maybe next year. <laughs> I've said that for at least a dozen years, sure. maybe two. That's, but yeah, we got to check that out. But everything's changing down there. They're kind of revitalizing that whole downtown area and moving into old buildings and tearing some of the really bad stuff down and rebuilding. But it's uh, it's pretty neat. But anyway. Yeah. All right. I say we bail before he gets back. Yeah. That'd be a good idea. And then tell him it was his fault. We're bailing. Okay. Bye. Thanks, everybody.